It's the gospel truth. It's the word of the Lord. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a two-way sword. It's a roadmap to heaven. And it's heaven's good news. Thank God for the Bible. It's the gospel truth. It's time for the Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. For more information about the ministry and the music of Brother Scott, go each week to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. You can get more messages and music at the website. So be sure to go to www.scottthomasministries.com once every week. And now... Here is Dr. Scott Thomas and the Gospel Truth. Let's turn to Job chapter 23, verse 10. Job chapter 23, verse 10. It's just what the Lord laid on my heart. I got to looking. And about one year ago, a year and a week really, um, we, uh, I, I preached on this same passage of Scripture. Uh, it just turned out that way. I'm marking my Bible what I preach, when, and all that. And so on August 24th last year, I preached on the way that I take. Uh, this year, the Lord just laid this Scripture on my heart. I got to look and I'm going to preach this morning on God's gold mine. Amen. So turn with me to Job chapter 23 and verse 10. Stand with us. We'll read the word of the Lord this morning. Preaching on God's gold mine, Job 23 verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. God, we come to you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house. I ask you, Lord, just to move and to touch and to bless. We'll give you the praise for it all. I ask you, Lord, to help somebody today that needs your help, needs a blessing, needs something in their life, just to feel that void, whatever it may be, Lord. Maybe they're going through a trial, troubles, and things in their life that they need help with today. I pray that you'd move in a mighty way. Give me an unction from the Holy Spirit and help me to preach in spirit and in truth. We'll give you the glory and the praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we see it this morning. But He knoweth the way that I take. Isn't that good? When He has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I want you to notice in a way of introduction this morning of notice the aftermath. And what I'm talking about is about trials. And there's not a one of us in here that don't go through trials at some point or another in our lives. And trials will challenge uh, your faith. They always have. Uh, trials will change your face. Not only challenge your faith, they'll change your face. When you go through trials, you can look in somebody's face that's going through trials and you'll see that there's worry in their face and there's wrinkles added to their face just because of the trials. And uh, I've seen this in folks just recently where trials has challenged their faith and not only that, but changed their face with worry and wrinkles. And then trials will do something else though. Trials will confirm your foundation. Amen. It'll confirm your foundation. It confirms your foundation is the Savior. It'll confirm it that He is your Savior, that you're one of His. And it'll confirm that your foundation is solid. It'll confirm whether you're on sinking sand or on the rock. Amen. Amen. And so that's the aftermath of it all. After it's all over, and after the trials are over, and you'll see where your faith has been challenged. You'll see where your faith has been changed and your foundation has been confirmed. But notice the attitude as well. 
I want to show you a few things that Job said here. There is a courage in what Job said. He said, but he knoweth the way that I take. It took a lot of courage for Job to say that. He knoweth the way that I take. He was saying that God was around. As a matter of fact, if you'll look at verse 9 of chapter 23, he said, On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him, he hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. He said, I don't know where he is, but I know he's right. Amen. 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 Friend, there's times in my life, in your life, we'll go through trials and <coughs> we'll think, Lord, I, I don't see God anywhere, but yet I know He's around and I know He's in this and I know He's going to help me through this. Yes, Lord. Job said He's there, though I can't see Him. God was around. And He was also saying God was aware. I want you to know this morning, no matter what you're facing in life, God knows where you are. God is aware. He hasn't forgotten your address. He hasn't forgotten about you. He knows what you're going through this morning. There was a courage in what Job said. Job said, even though I can't see him, I know he's there. That took courage to say that. There is a consideration in what Job said. Through Job, we learn two things. He said, first of all, uh, don't waver. Don't waver. We need to learn that. No matter how bad the trial gets, do not waver. Don't waver. And I can prove it to you in verse 11. He said, my foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Job said, I have my faith is in Him. My trust is in Him. Though I go through this trial, though everything's falling apart, my faith and my trust is still in the Lord. Job taught us through his life and by living it that we should not waver no matter what the trial is. It's the consideration number two. The second part we need to consider is that Job said do worship. Do worship. Don't waver, but do worship. Look at verse 12. He said, I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. He said, I'm going to praise him no matter what. I'm going to read his word no matter what. Amen. Hey, Job said, no matter what comes, how bad it may get, I will not waver and I'll keep on worshiping him. That's what Job did. There was a courage that in what Job said, there was a consideration in what Job said. There was also a confidence in what Job said. A confidence. Notice the latter part of our text. He said, I shall come forth as gold. Job didn't know that he was going to be restored. Job didn't know that the trial was going to come be over one day and, and everything will be restored to him and everything is going to work out. But Job did know this. He had confidence in the Lord. And he said, no matter what happens, I'm going to come out all right. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to come forth as gold. Because I'm putting my trust in the Lord. First of all, he's saying two things in this. He's saying don't get bitter. Look at verse 16 of this chapter, chapter 23. He said, For God maketh my heart soft. So I can't get bitter against God. So many times people go through trials and they get bitter on God and they'll say, I just ain't going to church no more and God ain't doing nothing for me. And they get so bitter toward God and toward God's people. But I'm telling you, Job said, My heart has become soft. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to let our heart get tender. That's the way you come forth as gold. Don't get bitter, but do get better. Do get better. And Job did. He got better, did he not? In so many ways. So this morning, I want to preach to you on God's gold mine. 
I shall come forth as gold. First of all, number one, I want you to know God understands the picture. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you're going through in your life. But I know this. God understands the picture. Yes. Job 23 and 10. I want you to know that these three little words. But he knoweth. God knows where you are. He understands the picture this morning. He knows all about it. Psalms 139 and 2. He said, Thou knowest my down sin. And my Rising and understandeth my thought afar off. God knows when you sit down. God knows when you get up. God knows you ever thought. And God certainly, He knows that, friend. He knows the trials you're going through. He knows the problem you're facing. He knows the trouble that you're going through. He knows all about it this morning. Amen. He understands it this morning. He understands the picture. He knows all about the tears. God sees your tears. Yes. You may think everybody's forgotten you, boy, it's so easy to do that. Especially uh, if you've been shut in or, or, or things like that. Hey, it's easy to think, well, nobody at the church that cares about me. The pastor don't care about me. And this one don't care about me. But I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, God understands uh, and He knows all about your tears. Uh, he sees it all. It said, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now here's Hezekiah. He's about to, about to die with sickness. In verse 3, it said, and Hezekiah wept sore. Hey, you would too if you thought you were about to die. Hezekiah began to weep and began to cry. But friend, then in verse 4, then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah.
He knows your temptations. Boy, I'm telling you, we, we put on a, a good front in front of people. We make that people think everything's all right and everything's okay. But inside, you're, you're melting inside. You're crushed inside. You're falling all to pieces. And you're going through things. And you get tempted here in those hours. When the trial is heavy and you're, and you're under that heavy load, you're tempted with some things. God knows about your trials. And He knows about your temptations. What's your temptations there in those trials? Well, let's look at some folks and see what their trials were in Jeremiah. Your temptation is to start storming. To start storming. I mean, we are human. And in those trials, we will do that sometimes. Jeremiah 20 and 8, he said, For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because of the, the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. Jeremiah said, I, I cried out violence and spoil. Boy, I'll tell you, sometimes we'll go through the trials and we'll get angry at the situation. And we'll say things we didn't mean and do things we shouldn't have done. And it's all the cause of the trial. And God understands that temptation. God sees those tears, but He also sees the temptation. But in that uh, uh, next verse, when Jeremiah said something else, he was tempted, and he did, to start storming. But he is also tempted to stop speaking. Jeremiah 29, then I said, I will not make mention of him. Jeremiah said, I just won't talk to God no more. Nor speak any more in his name. I don't have nothing to do with God no more. Boy, we get tempted like that when we're going through the battles and going through the trial. Some people do. Don't act all holy on me and act like you don't ever do that. Uh, friend, I'm telling you, we've all done that at some point or another. But this is what Jeremiah also said. He said, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. He said, hey, I, I, I got mad. I, I, I started shut Notice 
what Job said. I'm just preaching on this one verse this morning. But he know it. He understands the picture. But then notice he said, the way that I take, the way that I take, God understands the path. He gets the picture. He sees your tears, your temptation. But God sees the path to your home. The way that I take. Listen, this is what you and I have on this path. We have His presence on this path. We have His presence on the path. Since He knows the way that I take, then He's with me. If He knows the path you're on, then He knows where you are. He's better than a GPS. He can zero in on your location and be there. Amen. He sees it all. He knows the way you take. Matthew 28 and 20. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And then he said, Amen. <laughs> he knows who we are this morning. On this path, on this path, I know He is with you and with me because I can feel His closeness. You ever get on that path and you get the tears and the temptations and all the trials are falling in on you and then you get, all of a sudden, you feel real close to God. <laughs> You're not out of the situation, but you feel His closeness. You feel it through prayer. And then all of a sudden you begin to praise Him and you feel it through praise. What happened to Paul and Silas when they was over that jail cell? Did, man, they was in a trial. They were locked in chains in the jail cell. But they began to praise God right in the middle of their trial and they felt His closeness. And they felt His comfort through the Scripture, through the Spirit. Even though you're right in the middle of this thing, you can feel it this morning. We have His presence on the path. We have His purpose on this path. Romans 8, 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. I don't know why you're going through what you're going through and the things you're facing, but I do know this, God has a purpose for it all. Yeah. And it's His purpose. After the trial, everybody will see the purpose. When the trial is over, you'll see the purpose. And you'll see it included winning. Job, when he came out of his trial, he won in the end. And you will too. You say, how do you know that? Because I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. That's how I know. Yeah. You're on the winning side this morning. We win in the end. Right. We'll come forth. Let's go. Yes. Everybody will see the purpose. And it includes winning. Let's see the purpose, and it includes worth. When you come forth as go, you'll be worth more to Christ in the end. Amen. When you come out of the trial and you come forth as go, you'll be worth more to your church. That's right. Amen. You'll be worth more to God, and you'll be worth more to your church. You ever seen anybody that's been to a trial and had a heavy load and, and in the end they got the victory and they came forth rejoicing? Man, they come to the church house and, and all of a sudden they're getting up there and testifying and you can't hold, they can't hold back those tears. They talk 
everybody's going to worship in the end. That are God's children that have been through the trials. And that may not be on this side. But we'll certainly have a good time over there. Amen. Worshiping the Lord forevermore. Amen. Won't we have a good time? Amen. There's a purpose. You know what? It's hard to worship somebody that never did nothing for you. But when you've been through the trials, God brought you through it all. It's going to be so easy to worship Him. Amen. So easy to have a good time. I have His presence on this path. I have His purpose on this path. I have His perimeters on this path. This is what happens. Behind me, He will whisper. I can prove it to you. Isaiah 30 and 21. And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. Amen. You know that's what God will do? You know what God will do? This is not the way. If it don't look, this is not the way. You'll come up behind the way. He'll tell you, this is the way. No, no, go this way. Go that way. That's what God will do for me. Amen. Is that not what I just read? Yes. And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. Hey. Amen. Behind me, he will whisper. And before me, he will walk. Deuteronomy 31 and 8 in the Lord, he it is that do it, doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. He's going to be behind you. And He's going to be before you. You say, how, how can He be in two places at one time? Because He's God. Amen. Just like He can meet in this church and He can meet in the next church and the next oh. church. He can be before you and behind you all at the same time. Amen. He understands the path. He understands the picture. He understands the proving. Job 23 and 10. Look at this next little phrase. When he hath tried me. That's the proving. When he hath tried me. Psalms 11 and 5 says, The Lord try the righteous. He's not trying the wicked. He's trying the righteous. But the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Being tried is proof that you're one of his. Because he only tries the righteous. Going through trials, you're one of his. You ought to rejoice in that. First of all, notice the furnace that is picked. There's a furnace. There, there's a process here. In order to come out as gold, there's a process you have to go through. And that furnace is picked. Isaiah 48 and 10, he said, Behold, I have refined thee. That's the process. But not with silver. He said, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. He said, You're going to have to go through this furnace of affliction. But you're going to come out as gold, not as silver. You're going to come out as gold. 1 Peter 4 and 12, he said, Beloved, think it not strange. Don't think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You know, some folks say, Look, we're having to go through trials. They think they're the only ones that have been through. But you're not. Don't think it's strange. Don't think, Well, this is the only thing. I don't want to have been through this. No, no, no. God's letting you go through this for a reason. But listen here, the heat of the furnace, you know what it brings? It brings the help of the Lord, of the Father. The 
heat of the furnace brings the help of the Father. Notice the fumigator that is positioned. Malachi 3 and 3, and he said, and, and, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. This refining process the fumigator, that's the one that, that gets all this out of you. The fumigator is the refiner that gets rid of the imperfections and gets rid of the impurities. So our offerings to God will be righteousness. Why am I going through this trial, preacher? I don't know exactly, but I do know this. He'll get out in imperfections and get out in impurities. Amen. The furnace that is picked, the fumigator that is positioned, the freedom that is provided. While you're going through this process of being in the furnace, there will be a freedom in it. Daniel 3.25. Remember the three Hebrew children thrown into the furnace in the furnace? He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Notice, they were loose. They were no longer bound. Amen. That's the freedom that is provided in the furnace. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hey, just because you're going through the trial and going through the furnace don't mean you're alone. If you're just looking around, you'll find God right in the middle of it. Amen. Amen. In the fire, in the furnace, you are free to walk. And you're free to go. And you're free to worship. And you're free to walk with the Christ. Free to walk with the Comforter. Free to walk with the Creator. You'll be in the midst of your furnace. Let me ask you, are you being tried by fire and furnace? Hold on. Look around. You'll find the Son of God's in there walking around with you. We've seen that He understands the picture. He understands the path. He understands the proving, the furnace that you've got to go through. But He also understands the product, what comes out of it all. The latter part of that one verse, I shall come forth as gold. As, important word there, as. There will be an exit, Job said. There will be an exit. He said, I shall come forth. That means there's going to be an exit. We are going to be leaving and exiting troubles and trials and torture and torches. Amen. We're even going to exit and leave the tomb one day. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. I don't know about you. We're going to get out of this furnace one day. Isaiah 43 and 2. He said, when thou passest through the waters. Notice that word through. That means there's an exit. I will be with thee. And through the rivers. That means there's going to be an exit. And they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through. There's another exit the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Praise God, there's going to be an exit one day. Amen. Psalms 23 and 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. There's going to be an exit one day. There will be an exit. Second of all, there will be an exhibition put it an exhibit, if you will. And the exhibition is the gold. 1 Peter 1 and 7 says that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perishes. See, gold don't last. People are going around chasing gold, chasing money. Money chasers and gold chasers. See, they don't last. Peter said, 
the trial of your faith is more precious than gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That fire trial you go through, it's going to be exhibited as gold and praise to Jesus Christ. Y'all getting that? What I'm saying is after everything we go through, we will come out as gold. As gold. You see, grace is greater than gold. When you come out of that fire trial, you're going to be a picture of grace. Job said, it's like gold. as gold. He was just trying to give people around him a visual. Because gold is something you can see and touch. Grace, you can only see it with spiritual eyes. But you can't touch it. But you can feel it. Hey, Amen. And he said, grace is the gold I'm talking about. And grace is greater than gold because gold perishes, but grace will never perish. God's going to exhibit His grace that is in us. There'll be an exit, an exhibition. There'll be an enrichment. James 1, verse 3, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith Worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. If you're going through the trial, just wait. Have patience. God's going to work it out. Have patience. Because listen to this. That ye may be perfect and entire. I thought on that. Entire. What? I know what entire means, but what does it mean here? It seems weird to me, that word entire, right in the middle of that. He said, have patience. Let patience have a perfect work. Because when, when, when you're all through this thing and the trial's behind you, he said, in the end, you'll be made perfect and entire. You know what entire means there? Entire means complete. After you come through that trial, you'll be perfect and complete. And then he put two little words after that. Wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Been through the trial, preacher. Going through this thing. Uh, what's rough? Is in that first? But I looked right at the saw God right in the middle of it all. And when I look back, I saw that he was with me along that path. He is directing me and telling me which way to go and what to do. And he went right through the furnace of the fire with me. But when I came out, I was like gold. Filled with his grace. Perfect grace. Complete grace. I've learned I just don't want nothing else but him. <laughs> I don't want anything else. I got it all. He's put a grace in me. Mm. After you've been through that fire, your faith, your fruit, and facts, facts about your experience, about eternity, all that will be enriched. That was the point I was making. There will be an enrichment. It makes you better. Proverbs 25 and 4. I want to point out one thing to you. It says, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Now, what is dross? Now, when I read that, I said, like, What is dross? I looked it up and all it is is the trash. It's filled with impurities and imperfections and infections and iniquities. That's what dross is. 
says take away the dross from the silver. They're going to take out the imperfection, the impurities from the silver. See, all that trash has been taken away. The finer, that represents God. And there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. The, the, this vessel has no more impurities, no more iniquities, no more imperfections. And He can do something with that. See, God can't do nothing with you as long as you're full of sin and out of God's will and not where you ought to be. Imperfections and impurities in your life. God can't do nothing with that, but when you've been through the fire, He'll get rid of all that. He'll take all that out. And then He can do something with it. You see, there, there, there's a process. The fire, when He gets that out of that fire, He can mold it and make it into what He wants it to be. And when you come forth, God is the refiner that wants to make it in you something that's better than gold, and that is grace. And that grace that He puts in you, it will have a purity, it will have a purpose and a power that the world cannot contain. God's grace is God's gold mine. Grace is God's gold mine. And you can have it in you today. You've been listening to The Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. To order this message or to contact Brother Scott, go to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. Be sure to come back next week for more Bible preaching and The Gospel Truth. Yes, I love my Bible. Cause it's